Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Well, it's good to be back. Um, we were gone for, oh my gosh, I felt like I was gone forever. Some of you, I haven't seen you since last year, so hello to 2018. But I, we've, I felt like uh, we went to do a training in Mexico, which was amazing. There is this church in this, it's in this little town that it's growing, that it's so hungry, and they watch us live stream. But the majority of them do not speak English. But they are so, the Spirit of God will speak if you're willing to listen. And so they are so hungry, hungry for God. So we did a training for like a, a few days, and it was great. And then we decided to take a few days vacation. And uh, my husband is not here tonight because, as many of you know, what happened to my daughter. She was in a really bad accident. She stopped breathing. And, and isn't it something that the week, the day that I left actually to Mexico, my my um, my preaching was in changing my perception and to count it all joy, to consider all joy, to think it all joy when you fall into various trials, right? I'm going on vacation. I'm not expecting trials. I'm actually expecting a respite time, a time just to sit and just do nothing and eat all this Mexican food which I still have some, I feel it. You know, when you go on vacation, you're like, oh, I should have but you did it. And so we get to, to uh, you know, and when you go on vacation, it takes you like two days to unwind. So, and we only had like five days. So it was like, okay, two days to unwind. And then I realized that mosquitoes from Mexico love me. <laughs> no, I'm serious. They love me. I cannot see them, nobody sees them, you don't even hear them, but they, I have bites everywhere and they turn into hives. So by the first day, I'm already itchy, I can't sleep, and you know, I went to the doctors, they gave me the prescription, but still, you know, you're like in the sun, and anyways, but we're like, count it all joy. I was like, this is my trial, these little mosquitoes, you know? And then when, um, that happened to my daughter. That's when you know, do you really count it all joy? When something that is so out of your control. And at that moment, what is the first thing that comes out of your mouth? How do you respond? How do you react? And sometimes, you know, in the church, I, would, I talk a lot about how it's better to respond or react. You know, who cares? It's how are you going to see the situation? That's what I realized there. Because responding is reacting is what you're going to do. But how am I going to see it? Well, I'm going to tell you that it gave me a little shock. Because this is my baby girl, right? And you know, if you're a parent, you're like, this is my girl. Like, mm. But the next day, I, as I was sitting in and uh, reading my word, I, and I said, isn't it something that I just read this in the Lord? So I'm going to see it as an opportunity. Because the devil will always come and tell you, you know what? You should have responded better. This should have come out of your mouth. But you, Virginia, you just sat there and you went into shock. A good mom wouldn't do that. And if you were not here Sunday for, uh, for our and more, you missed it. You need to hear, I don't know if we have it all on live stream, but one of the things that I got from what Pastor Tommy is like, enough with dialoguing with the devil. Enough. Like I told myself, all this time, we don't think we're dialoguing with them. I always said, do not negotiate with terrorists, right? And that's what we're doing, negotiating with the worst one. We're the ones that's persecuting the church, and you are the church. You and I are the church. 
But yet we sit there, we think that we're going to come into an agreement. He's going to agree with us. No, he's never, ever going to agree with the word of God. He's never going to agree with the promises of God. He's never going to agree with the calling of your life. He's never going to agree for your prosperity. He's never going to agree for your health. He is never going to do it, and he's never going to tell us that we're going to be okay. So the next day, I, I told the Lord, you know, Lord, I'm going to count it. An opportunity, because that's what I preached the, the Wednesday before. This is an opportunity for me to grow. This is an opportunity for me to remind myself that you never, ever, ever, ever leave us. And I think this year, no, I know, I don't want to say I think, I know for a fact that this is a year of growth. This is a year change. This is a year of opportunities. Opportunities are going to knock at your door and they don't look like you think they're going to look. And I'm going to go back just, uh, uh, just that verse that we read the last time. James 1, 2 says, this is my own version of Virginia, you know, uh, translation. Put it all together, what I like, what I don't like. No, just kidding. Um, it says, dear brothers and sisters, Whenever you face trials, it says, consider it an opportunity for great jo joy. But I'm going to tell you that that moment that they told me, your daughter, this is what happened to your daughter. I have to be honest with you. And I didn't say, whoopee-doo. What a great joy. But it's not about that. It's, you know, we think when I read it and I thought, you know, that's what we're supposed to do. No, I'm supposed to consider it. Okay, Lord, I know that you're with us. This is an opportunity to remind myself the nature of who you are. This is an opportunity of me to, to proclaim that you are good, that you are powerful, that you're limitless, that there's nothing impossible for you. This is the time to, I need to remind myself of every song that I have sang. Right? Because we sang, you're the God of miracles. But when something hits you, you're like, I don't know if you can do a miracle here. This should have never happened. But you know, we live in a life and in a world that is full of sin and it's out of our control. But we are in control of how are we going to see that trial, that problem. And I was, you know what? I am thankful, Lord, that you saved my girl. I'm thankful that, you know what? I actually, as a matter of fact, now I'm more convinced of her purpose. I'm more convinced of her destiny of her life, our lives, obviously you felt threatened by Elevate Church. And who is Elevate Church? It's not just us, it's you. Obviously what we went to do there in the church is growing, like uh, growing. I'm telling you, they're growing. But I want you to know that that's your fruit. That when you, one day when you get to heaven and you're about to give an account to God, you're going to be Virginia Reese and I'm going to come here and, and I'm going to be all these people that you impacted their lives, that they decided to change their nation, they decided to change their cities, they decided to change themselves and they go into your account. So what am I saying tonight? I'm saying that this year we cannot allow ourselves to be shaken. Do not allow to be shaken. Do not have conversations. Do not have tea or coffee, whatever you prefer, and talk to the enemy. Many times the first one that we talk to is not God. We wake up and the first thing you think is like, oh my gosh, how am I going to pay this bill? How am I going to do this? How am I going to reach these people? How am I going to accomplish the week? That wasn't my first thought. That, that's not, that wasn't God considering my day already great. No, I'm already considering every lie of the enemy. But can you imagine if all of us make a decision and we say this year when we wake up, the first thing that I'm going to say, I'm going to train my mouth, my heart, my mind. And the first thing that I'm going to say is praise you, Jesus, for another day. 
thank you that I am alive. You might be sick in body, but you say, thank you that I am alive. Thank you that you are my healer. Thank you that my body is going already in the process. I'm just waiting for that manifestation to take place, but I'm already whole. I'm already healed, and I thank you for that, Lord. Do you know that, has, that needs a lot of training? We need to know that God never leaves us. Because I don't know about you, but when they told me that, I felt like he left me. Can we be honest? I was like, uh, excuse me? You just left? We're on vacation. And you left because we're on vacation? Where's your protection? Where are the angels? Where are like... And you can go in all those thoughts, and the more you think of that, the more you go in, into a deeper hole, the more you think that God is not for you, the more you think that God is not going to do a miracle, the more you think that this is, this is, this is going worse. No, what, she stopped breathing three times, and, and no. This year, you need to know that you know that you know, and not only know it, believe it, live it, experience it, walk it, chew it, knowing that he is with us in our darkest moments. And I can really say that. That I can see my life through my entire life, and I know that I had so many dark moments with Jesus and without Jesus, but I can still say that he was with me then without him because he loved me and he called me and he was with me then when I had him and he will be, he's with me today and he will be with me tomorrow in the future until I go to heaven. But can you imagine if we all make that decision? Can you imagine the promises of God that we can see this year? We need to know that he's always, 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 say it always, with me. You know what always means? It means he's always present. He never leaves. Have you ever met those people that are like so like clingy? You know, I'm sure you never met those people. But you know, people that like, they're like gum, like, or your shadow, and they follow you, and they follow you, and you're like, what the heck? Give me a breathing. Like right now, we have two little dogs at home. They're tiny. They're French bulldogs. They're so cute. But they follow me everywhere. They follow me everywhere. I'm like, I am not your mama. You have a father. His name is Mauricio. And you have another father, and his name is Isaac. But they follow me everywhere. Follow me. It's so cute. You know what? Even God used that illustration to tell me that's how I am pursuing you. Wherever you go, he says, I'm actually, I go before you. If you would only know me. If you only know me. Let me give you my scripture because then, wow, I already have the time. No, I'm just kidding. I have a lot of time. Okay, let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 31, 7, and 8. This year we need to see. Remember the saying before, like, I, I don't know if it was in the 90s when I gave my life to Jesus or the early 2000s that everybody had a bracelet and said, what would Jesus do? And we didn't do nothing. Remember, like, we all carry them, right? I had, like, three different colors for Monday, Tuesday, you know, to have to match my outfit. And I thought, my God, we've been saying that. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? It doesn't matter what would Jesus do. What are you going to do? And that's what God told me. He says, no, the new saying should be, what would Jesus see? How would he see my life right now in this moment? Whether it's good, you have a, you're having the best time of your life, how does he see it? You know that he will, he will want more for you if you're having like such an awesome time? How would you see, how would he see your life if you're not in a good place in your life? How would he see it? I tell you that, Jesus would never moan. Jesus would never sit there and, and just cry forever. I'm th so I am a crier, you know. Thank you, Jesus. He delivered me because I, before I, did, I didn't cry. So that's goodness, right? That's, that's good because you're showing your emotions. But I'm like, if Jesus 
wept. It's okay for us to cry, but he wept and then he stopped. He stopped and he got up and then he went in and did what he had to do. But he was in the garden. He said that he wanted to die. If you, if you, if you really study, he said that he wanted to die. He wanted to like, I don't want to do this, God. I, Father, I don't want to go to the cross. I don't want to. Can this be given to somebody else? See, we see Jesus like, my gosh, he never, he's awesome because he came in a form of a human being. He understands every emotion. He understands everything that you have been through, he went through already for you. But then when I read the word, it encourages me because I'm like, you know, he was at the point of like, I'm quitting. You know, Lord, send the Holy Spirit. But then he got up. And he says, you know what, nevertheless, let your will be done in my life. And we need to allow his will to be done in our lives. Did I give you the scripture? Are you there? Then Moses called Joshua and said to him, in the sight of all Israel, be strong and of good courage. For you must go with this people to the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them. And you shall cause them to inherit it. Circle the word cause them. I thought Joshua caused, how many people were there? I mean, it was a millions, right? One person made a decision and he caused the entire Israelites to cross and go get their position. He was the cause. Then you, we know we're fasting and we're praying. And I told the Lord sometimes I want somebody to, did you ever like get tired? You want like, you know, you, if, if you're living for God, you're being hit back, oh, back to back, right? But of course, God is always with us and he gives us strength and we get up. But there's days, I'm going to tell you that you're like, I would like a vacation from, from you know, like, a, can, Lord, can you give me a month? Just a month. A month where I don't have to just, just not deal with anything, you know? He says, then, then you want to be in heaven then? <gasps> no, Lord. Because in heaven, we don't have to deal with anything. It's, it's just joy. And he says, Virginia, but my will is that you will bring heaven to earth. So why do you want to check out? It's too hard, Lord. It's too hard. I mean, think about Moses, and we read his story, right? And he didn't enter the promised land. Why? Because he lost it. The brother lost it. I felt bad. You know, it was when I became a, uh, when I was a baby Christian last week. No, she <laughs> I was reading the Bible. You know, read your Bible. So I was reading the Bible, but I was always upset at every story. Like, one of those, like, why? One of those kids that, why, why, why? Like, oh, God, he is love. Believe me, he never gets tired of you because I will question everything. But why would you kill them? Why would you send them there? Why? Why? It's not about the why, it's what. What was the purpose? But I'm like, Moses, God, he missed it once. You know, he allowed his condition. He allowed the issues of other people to check him out of his race. That's what happened to him. He got tired. He was so sick and tired of like, oh, can you imagine? I mean, just 150 people telling you problems. I can imagine even 600, but you have millions. And most of them, they all complain and grumble daily. Can you imagine? That every day you hear, you know what? Johnny is doing that. Johnny can't do this. Johnny, Johnny, when we were in, in Studio City, we were so happy, Johnny. But now we're in New Hall. I remember there were more restaurants, Johnny. Here, there's no. Johnny, 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 Johnny. You're like when the kids come, Mom, Mom, Mom. You're like, ah, ah, right? And that's just when they're little. Can you imagine Moses 40 years with them? Mosey, 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 shut. 
that. Hell up. <laughs> Live in hell. You can say hell in church. There is a real hell. It wasn't invented for us. It wasn't created for you and I. It was for the enemy, for the devil and his cohorts. But no, be because about it. Bless the Lord. It's okay because we have Jesus and he came to redeem us, right? So let's not, that's another message. But can you imagine? I'm like, oh my gosh, 40 years. You're like, use me, Lord, use me, Lord. And then you become a leader and they're like, you know, on the phone, texting, and you see emails. You're like, oh my gosh. That's like five people that you're dealing with. You're like, take me, Father, take me. Take me or take me to a church where people won't grumble. People will always grumble. I have grumble. Not about you, but to God, you know what I mean? But I'm like, oh my gosh. But this is the interesting part. He says, you shall cause them to inherit it. To Joshua. So Joshua is like, okay, no wonder God said, be of good courage. And if you read uh, Joshua first, it's, one is like, be of good courage. He says it like a thousand times. I'm like, Lord, my gosh, what, what is he going to encounter? You have to say, be of good courage. Be of, be, of, be of strength. Be brave. Be like, okay. I'm already getting worried for Joshua. When I read it, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is too much in one chapter. One conversation, you're saying like nine times. Be courageous. Be of good courage. Do not fear. Be brave. Be valiant. Okay. But I want to tell you something that make a difference between Joshua and Moses is that he communed with God. He didn't do it alone. It's when we do it alone is when we get in trouble. It's when we do it alone and we're trying to change, right? We're talking about change and we're trying to change by ourselves, within ourselves. You cannot change yourself unless you will it and you give your will to God. Because if you're a Christian, you're, you're, you, don't, you don't even belong to yourself. Isn't it something? I don't belong to myself anymore. I belong to God. I've been bought with the price. And that price comes with the tag. And the tag is awesome. That tag says all inclusive. We were staying at a hotel for the first time that it was all inclusive. I was in heaven. I'm like, what? That's why I ate too much, you know. All inclusive? I asked all the workers. Is uh, kayaking inclusive? Yes. Oh. I want to ask another one. Kayaking is inclusive? You know you never know, right? I don't even know how to kayak, but I wanted to make sure. And I did go kayaking, and I was like, <sighs> with my vest, because, you know, I don't know how to swim, right? And I was like, they had all these th things in the pool, and I'm like, is that inclusive? Do I have to pay for it? No, you can use it. Okay, let me ask another worker. It, this is Mexico. You're going to be like, you're buying it or, you know. But everything was inclusive. And I would ask, is that inclusive? I, I, was, I think they already knew me. Like, oh, my God, there she, there she comes. <laughs> She's going to ask, is that inclusive? The answer is yes, we. There's a lot of people, French people, we, we, yeah. Si, yes. They try every, whatever they knew how to speak. So just making sure. And I would show my, my little thing that I had, like. My seal, the, I'm staying here. Watch me. I can eat whatever I want, whenever I want, at the time I want it. Go to the beach. You don't tell me what to do. <laughs> and I did it. I ate like a maniac. I wasn't fasting, so don't judge me. I came back. I'm, I'm, I, I learned. Anyways, what am I saying to you? That we have all inclusive. Our salvation comes with everything. We, it comes with everything. But what was like, does that come with that? Is, is, is it just a ticket to heaven? No, you don't only have room in heaven. You can eat of the goodness of God on this earth. Isn't it awesome? The second verse is, in the Lord, he is the one who goes who? Before you. And he will be with you. And he will not leave you nor forsake you. So do not fear, nor be dismayed. Wouldn't it be awesome that you would be the cause for your family to change? Like we want to change the world, right? 
We want to change our co-workers. We want to go and be witnesses, right? We're witnessing like, oh, my gosh, it's the gospel. We're witnessing. No, that doesn't mean to be a witness. It means to walk it, to, to live a life like Jesus lived. To see people like he sees them. To see your trials and tribulations as an opportunity. You know how hard that is? If I can tell you every trial and every problem and every tribulation that we have been, you will be like, it's because during those seasons, I might not responded or reacted good at the beginning, but I knew. And I needed to remind myself that God is always with me. Jesus said it in a better way, Matthew 28, 20, said, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, he was so cool. And lo, that was like saying yo, right? I am with you. He said, always, even unto the end of the world, amen. Always means he's always present, but not always present, but we have his presence. Do you know that you carry his presence inside of you because he is with you always? Always 24-7 when you're doing good, when you're doing bad, when you're not in your ugly moments. Do you know that? He is with you 24-7. Can you imagine if all of us choose to view life through those lenses? No, God is with me. That the first thing that comes out of our mouth, we need to be trained to say, no, God, my God is with me. And you know, we can change our story. I always thought before Jesus came into my life that he gave me the crappiest, I think you can say that, right? story I was like he wrote this for me because you hear it right God has a plan and and that's the that's the in my whole life I heard well that's the will of God so uh, see my cousin murdered that's the will of God uh, yes I have lived through awful things I have seen horrific things not as a grown man I'm talking about as a child and when you're a child, you don't understand. But now I can see that God was always with me. I can see I'm alive because he was with me. He didn't write that for me. Because his plan, according to Jeremiah, he says that his plan is a good plan. I have written the best script of your life. And guess what? Even if you take a detour, even if you choose to rewrite your own story, at any time you can just allow yourself and submit to God and will it and give yourself to him. And he can give you the best story. You know what? I'm not going to end that way. My family is not going to end this way. My health is not going to end this way. My finances are not going to end this way. 2018 is not going to end this way. I'm going to rewrite history because I can cause it to inherit my promise. I can be the catalyst. But sometimes you want someone to be the cause, right? I don't know about you, but I always feel like, ah, can somebody just take over for me? Tag your it. It doesn't work that way. But he works that way with the Holy Spirit. Because when we're the weakest, he's the strongest in us. So don't not allow, do not allow the problems, the issues of life to condition you to your story. You know, I'm like that because well, this is what happened to me. I was abandoned. I did receive love. You know, I was abused. You can name it. You say it and you put it up blank. This is, this is why I am the way I am. But that's, that's if you let your story shape you. Your past shape you. Because Jesus came to rewrite the story. And you know what? And he came to write and he gave us uh, his word and his word. My story is here. 
and he gave us an inheritance. And I'm going to tell you that the testament has been written for you. He had to die so we can receive the inheritance, right? You will never receive an inheritance unless someone dies. He chose to die for you and I so we can inherit his goodness and his promises on this earth, not just in heaven. And many times I haven't seen the promises of God. It's not because God didn't give them to me. No, all is inclusive, right? But I just refused. I refused. You know what? Because he, he has a cause. It's like me eating all those pastries. pastries. Now I have to work out more. Right? It's funny, but then everything has a cause. But we're not willing to, to go and possess it. He says, you will cause them to possess it and I will always be with you. You will cause. I want to be the cost of my family. I want to be the cost of my church. I want to be the cost of my city. You know what? It was that woman. If not, your story is going to change you and you're going to justify your condition. Believe me, you can justify your condition. I am this way because A, B, C, and D. And I'm not going. I'm not going to go into these stories, but um, I'm going to tell you about two people that decided to change, that decided to see their lives in a different way. I can always finish this next week, right? Thank you. There was the men at the pool. Remember, the, uh, and this is your homework. You can read it on your own. Uh, John 5. And it talks about the, the men at the pool, right? With the five porches. Remember, I even preached on that. This is that he was in a condition. He was, uh, he had an infirmity. And if you read it, I think he was lame from some place. He couldn't move. But it doesn't say that he was paralyzed, fully paralyzed. So he had this issue, this condition, right? And they have five porches. And he was used to the comfort. Jesus was present and he came and he couldn't see as an opportunity. Hey, here's the healer. Here's the man. I don't have to wait for a pool. I don't have to wait for somebody to come help me. But he had allowed his condition to justify where he was. Because all he did when asked, Jesus asked him, do you want to be made whole? How do you want to be this year? He's like, he didn't say yes. He was like, yes or no answer and he went like no it's because what happened what had happened is you know what had happened is that I've been here for 30 years and other people you see that they're stronger they have help and you know my condition no you want to be in the shade he should have just rolled over I thought to myself you know just rolled over to the pool anyways if you get there you're gonna get healed either way right rolled over do something and it took him a while for him to open his eyes and see, to see Jesus. But then there's the other, the other story about that issue of the woman of blood. The, the blood. Remember, she was bleeding for 12 years. And you know, she says she considered it. Can you put that scripture for me? I think it's in Matthew. But she says this, as suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, she said to herself, she said to herself, write it down, circle it. She said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around and when he saw that, he said, he said, be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. Do you know when you studied the original when she said, if only I may touch the hem of his garment, I'm going to be made well. You know what that meant? Everybody said her story was like she lost all the money. She lost all her money. There was no more medicine. For 12 years, she spent everything. She was, used to be a wealthy woman. Now she has nothing. She has a lot of things and they're valid. They justify her situation to say, you know, I'm never going to get healed. Doctors can help me. I spend all the money. There is not a pharmacy here. They, no one can cure me. There is nothing. I have no more help. The hospitals are closed. They already told me that this is my condition for life. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm dying. I'm bleeding out. 
That's what people told her. And religion told her, you are unclean. Because if you have an issue of blood, you're unclean. You are not welcome in our society, so therefore you're cast out. So, so her money couldn't help her. People couldn't help her. Medicine couldn't help her. Religion couldn't help her. But then she realized, but Jesus can. Jesus can. If only I can touch him. And if you study it, that means that she said it over and over and over and over and over. She premeditated, but that means she was like, if only I can touch the garment, I'm going to be made well. If only, and she said it over and over and over and over and over until it cost her to what? To inherit her wholeness. And at that moment, she said, you know, I don't care. I know that I just need to touch the hem of his garment and I'm going to be made whole. All you need to do is touch Jesus. You need to pursue him. And that's, if, if I'm pursuing change right now, that's what I want. I want Jesus. I want to find myself in him. I want to pursue him. I want to be like that woman. You know what? People can say, you're never going to change. You're never going to get up. You're never going to come out of your situation. That's never going to be da, da, da. And religion will tell you, no, well, what it, it is, it is. No. God is able to do it. God is able to heal us. God is able to deliver us. He's able to do so. But we must seek him. You crawl if you have to. We don't even come to church. Look at this Wednesday. Crawl to church. There's days that I don't want to come. I'm crawling. I'm going to get to the house of God. I'm going to get to the house of God. I'm going to get to the house of God. I'm going to hear his word and that word is going to wash me and cleanse me and that word is going to transform me because I need to change the way that I see. That way that I see myself. I need to know who he is in my life and who I am in his life. Know when everything is good because when everything is good, I, you're pretty cheery up, right? You're like, oh, God is good all the time. And you're like, you're like singing songs and you're like. No, it's when you encounter something that you know where you are in the faith and God wants you to stay in faith to abide in faith to live in faith to chew the faith to walk in his word and do not allow your issue your condition to justify where you are in life because God has the answer and his name is Jesus if today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.